morning and welcome to the First Baptist Church of Rust Sunday morning Bible study. We're going to be looking at uh, a passage that's familiar, I think, to many people if you've, uh, if you've uh, been a church attender and, and Sunday school uh, attender for any length of time at all. You're probably familiar with the story of the healing of Naaman. Uh, the commander of the army of, of the king of Aram, which is, was his modern-day Syria, uh, by Elisha. Uh, Elisha, Elisha. So uh, that is found in First in Second Kings. We're in Second Kings, <clears throat> chapter five, and uh, verse one through fourteen. We're going to read those verses in a moment, but I encourage you to get a, a Bible or a scripture device of some sort and uh, pull up uh, 2 Kings 5 and we'll read the verses there together let's pray first <clears throat> Father it's a joy as always to, to try to discuss your word uh, to read it ponder contemplate it and allow you dear Holy Spirit to to guide our thoughts and to teach us, to remind us, <clears throat> to give us perhaps insights that we either haven't had before or we don't remember. So I, I pray that uh, the study of these verses this morning will be beneficial to those who hear this Bible study and including myself. Uh, uh, we want to, <clears throat> we want to be encouraged and, and motivated by your word uh, to trust you and to uh, obey you and to serve you in any way we can. And may this Bible study contribute to that. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> King, uh, the king of Aram I had a um, commander of uh, the army named Naaman. Naaman. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> and uh, this king uh, probably was Ben Hadad II, but that doesn't matter either. Uh, but uh, Naaman was a a well-respected and uh, uh, competent, very capable person. Let's just read verse 1. Naaman, commander of the army for the king of Aram, was a man important to his master, the king, and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory, that's military victory, to Aram. Uh, the Aram is a country. It's uh, north of Israel. Uh, again, what would be modern-day Syria. The man, that's Naaman, was a valiant warrior, but he had a skin disease. <clears throat> I, I think these, uh, this first verse uh, ought to remind us that uh, we've all got uh, as one of our speakers at a at a revival here, uh, Bible conference, if we may have called it, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, said we've all got issues, and we are we've all got hang-ups, we've all got problems, we've all got weaknesses. Now, conversely, we have strengths, and we have abilities, but. Uh, uh, only Jesus uh, had no issues and he was faced with many issues and trials and temptations scripture says all the temptations that we'll ever face Jesus faced now that's a, an interesting truth to ponder but uh, this man Naaman he was very capable of valuing where he had, he had been successful in leading the army of Aram, the country of Aram, nation, uh, to victory and brought great victory uh, during this king's reign. 
Uh, and he was, he was uh, faithful to the king, faithful to his country, faithful to his people. Uh, and he just had a lot of strong points. But, as it says at the end of this verse, but he had a skin disease. Well, um, we, as, as you know, as I like to reflect upon life. Uh, I, I don't. I'm not. I don't, I'm not suggesting that I am capable of of understanding the deep things of life. Uh, but I like to reflect on my life, the life of my family, the life of my friends, and. Uh, uh, I, I think, at least as I've grown old, older, you know, the medical world, they, they, don't, they don't use the term old. Uh, the doctors, the nurses, uh, they're trained not to tell you that you're old. They'll say you're less young, less young. <laughs> well, I'm old. Uh, I'm past the less young point. And, uh, and uh, I, I can recognize my weaknesses. I can recognize many. There's probably, I've got weaknesses that I probably don't recognize and I don't even realize. And I probably need some really good close friends that would point them out to me so that maybe I could, uh, with the Lord's help, maybe uh, improve. But Naaman's weakness and his problem, his issue was a skin disease. Uh, we would think it was probably leprosy, but nevertheless, it was serious. Uh, verse 2 says that Aram, that nation, had gone on raids and brought back, they, they raided the various countries, and they brought back from one of their, their military uh, ex expeditions uh, from the land of Israel, a young girl who had become the servant of Naaman's wife. And she said to her mistress, Naaman's wife, if my master, referring to Naaman, were, were with the prophet who is in Samaria, she was referring to Elijah, he, the prophet, would cure my master, Naaman, of his skin disease. So Naaman, uh, obviously, uh, the young Israelite uh, girl, she told Naaman's wife, Naaman's wife told him, verse 4, so Naaman went and told his master, the king, what the girl from the land of Israel had said. Therefore the king of Aaron said, Go, and I will send a letter with you to the king of Israel. Uh, he liked the idea of any possibility of healing of Naaman, his faithful, valiant military leader of this terrible skin disease. So, uh, and he said, I, I'll, I'll write a letter to the king of Israel and, and, and ask him to, to take care of you, help, help get you healed, healed. So he went, Naaman went and took with him 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. Uh, he, he took these, these val valuable things, gold, silver, sets of clothing uh, to give as a gift to the king of Israel uh, to, uh, to, to get his favor, gain his favor. Uh, verse 6, Naaman brought the letter that the king of Aram had written to the king of Israel, and it read, when this letter, this is what the king of Aram's letter to the king of Israel read, when this letter comes to you, note that I have sent to you my servant, servant Naaman for you to cure him of his skin disease. Well, uh, I sort of pride myself as being able to uh, write letters. In my work as an attorney for 50 years, I did a lot of letter writing. I, I wrote uh, contracts. I wrote uh, resolutions for and ordinances for city councils that I worked for to pass. Uh, I, I wrote many, many letters. <clears throat> uh, my, I, I, I have a little uh, 
problem with this letter that the king of Aaron has sent with Naaman because it it sounds as if the king of Aram is expecting the king of Israel to himself, the king of Israel, cure uh, Naaman himself. Uh, and uh, I don't, we have no indication that the king of Israel was, had any medical training or was any kind of a, of a healer, uh, had the gift, spiritual gift of healing or anything like that or was a medicine man of any kind, but the way the letter is worded, let me read it again. When this letter comes to you, note that I've sent to you my servant for you to cure. I've sent my uh, highly prized military leader uh, so that you can cure him of his sin disease. Well, uh, only God cures. Now, I'm all in favor of the medical world, medical research, doctors, physicians, assistants, nurse practitioners, restaurant, I, I mean, anybody. Uh, I, I'm in favor of them. And uh, I, they do great work, and they're very important. And I, 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 I at my age, I, I make a lot of doctor's visits, and I take a lot of medication. And I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for them. But God is the source of all healing. He is, as the uh, old hymn says, the great physician. The great physician now is near the sympathizing Jesus. I can't remember the rest of them. Those, those words just came out of my mind. So, uh, I think uh, the king of Aram could have, could have worded his letter a little better uh, because verse 7 says when the king of Israel read the letter he tore his clothes and asked am I God he knew that God is the source of healing am I God killing and giving life this man referring to the king of Aram expects me to cure a man of his skin disease uh, I think he's picking a fight with me because he knows he should know I can't do that uh, so he's very alarmed. The king of Israel is very alarmed when he reads the letter that the king of Aram has sent. And apparently his alarm led him to believe, the letter led him to believe that well, he's just trying to provoke a conflict with Israel. And he's probably going to invade us and go to war because we, you know, we're not going to be able to heal uh, this man, Naaman, uh, his Military leader, his servant. Uh, we're not going to be in. Oh, he's going to end up in a in a national calamity. Well, word of this dilemma and this uh, situation got back to Elisha, the prophet of God <clears throat> in Israel. Verse eight says, "When Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message. Uh, tearing your clothes is a sign of of uh, distress." And, and and alarm. Uh, so he sent a message to the king of Israel saying, why have you torn your clothes? Uh, and he apparently knew the whole story about Naaman and his skin disease because he says in verse 8, have him, referring to Naaman, come to me and he will know that there's a prophet of God in Israel. So Elisha sends word that uh, don't be distressed, king of Israel. Um, not sure who it was. It probably uh, Jehoshaphat, I'm thinking. Uh, but anyway, the king of Israel, he tells him, don't, don't be distressed and alarmed, but send the uh, Syrian the Ar 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 Aramean uh, leader, military leader, Naaman, to me, and, and he, in effect he's saying, I'll take care of it, I'll heal him, because I'm a prophet, and he will, he will realize that I'm a prophet. So Naaman, so, so the king of Israel does. He sends Naaman on to uh, Elisha. 
So Elisha came with his horses, and so Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stood at the door of Elisha's house. He goes there. Then Elisha sent out to him from his house a servant messenger who said to Naaman, Go wash seven times in the Jordan, and your skin will be restored, and you will be clean. So this is interesting because Elisha doesn't even come out of the house to meet or greet Naaman. He just sends his servant out and says, I know what you're here for. Go down to the Jordan River. Go to the Jordan River and uh, wash seven times and you'll be healed. Your skin will be healed. Your skin disease will be gone and you will be clean. Um, oh, wow. That's overwhelming. Uh, verse 11. But Naaman got angry and left, saying, I was telling myself, or I thought to myself, surely he, Elijah, will come out, stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hands over the place, over me, my body, and cure this tendency. And then he says, Aren't Abana and Farpar, which are rivers in Syria, or Aram, the rivers of Damascus, which is the capital of Aram, better than all the waters of Israel, could not wash in them and be clean. So he, Naaman, turned and left Elijah's house in a rage. He was greatly offended and he was greatly disappointed uh, because what he had expected to happen didn't happen. In fact, what did happen, they, uh, Elijah just sending his servant out and telling him to go wash seven times in the Jordan River, that was the last thing that Naaman would have expected, perhaps. And he was greatly offended. He said, we've got rivers in my home country, Aram. Uh, he names a couple that are good, clean, clear water. If I was going to wash in a river, I, I would have washed there. Uh, if, if, if washing in a river was going to heal me, uh, I would had a lot better source of water, river water there. So he turns and he leaves. Verse 13, but his servants approached him. His servant, that's Naaman's servant, who was with him. He had an entourage of, of servants there carrying the gold and the clothes and all that and protecting him, of course. Uh, and they said to him, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you uh, not have done it? How much more should you do it when only he only tells you go wash in the river and be clean? So they appeal. They appeal. Naaman's servants appeal to him. They calm him down. They calm him down. Uh, I need friends. I need family. I need companions sometimes to calm me down when I get upset about something that I shouldn't be upset about. You probably did this too. We all tend to do that at times. When our expectations are not only unmet, but we're confronted with something that seems ridiculous, seems absurd, uh, is suggested as a solution to our problems, we get upset. We get offended. We have pride, too much pride. Uh, and so they, Naaman's servants, they, they speak to him calmly. They say, look, if, if Elijah, the prophet of God, if he had told you to do something difficult or unusual, you know, that required effort on your part, a lot of, a lot of time maybe, uh, you would have done it, wouldn't you? Uh, he knows he would have. And so he says, so since he told you to do something this simple, go to the Jordan River and wash in it. Why won't you do that? So he thinks about it. He reconsiders. He realizes that they're giving him good advice. And he says, verse 14, So Naaman went down and dipped himself in the Jordan River seven times, according to the command of the man of God, Elisha. Then when he did that, 
his skin was restored and became like the skin of a small boy and he was clean. He was clean. Well, perhaps familiar story to you, Bible story to you, true story. But why do we need to learn from this, this passage of Scripture? Well, I think one thing we need to learn is that God is the source of all healing, physical healing, mental illness healing. Uh, God has the solution to all the non-physical, non-mental, non-medical problems also. God is, he has all the answers because he is in control of it all. In the scripture that says in the Psalms, I believe, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He owns the hills. He owns the planets. He owns the universe. He owns everything. God is it. Boggles the mind, doesn't it? Why God? in control, all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere, omnipresent. Uh, God, that is God. He is in control. He is sovereign. He's in charge. Nothing happens without his permission. He doesn't. He allows us to reap uh, consequences of our bad choices as a natural consequence of curse. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. Uh, but uh, he is in control. He can change anything. He can, and he does work it all for his ultimate purposes. Does that mean we always follow God's will? That everything we do is God's will? No, no. Uh, we we miss God's will probably more than we than we find it, obey it, and do it. Uh, but he controls all circumstances. That's one thing we need to know. We need to know that that any healing of physical or mental diseases or problems uh, that that uh, we can obtain benefit by in this life on this earth, uh, God is at the source of it. He enables medical science to learn and develop medicines, doctors to educate themselves, research, all that. God has allowed that. He has blessed it, I believe, in many ways. And so we need to realize that when we go to our primary care physician or our specialist. Uh, I've had a few medical issues here in this, this year, past year, past month, with my heart, with my neck. Um, and uh, we, with my eyes, had cataracts removed. Appreciated that doctor who wanted to pray with me. I've got it. I've got an ophthalmologist that'll pray with me. I've got a primary care physician that'll pray with me every time. I, I'm grateful because they recognize that. Well, even the ones that, even the, the, the doctors, the physicians, the medical world that don't recognize that, that don't even pray, they're being enabled by God. And I'm glad. I want him to keep on it. Uh, I, I, I believe, I, I'm convinced I'm ready to, to go. I'm ready to die. But I, I'm like the old saying goes, I'm not trying to get a, a busload together to leave this afternoon. Uh, I, I, want, I want to stay in this life as long as God wants me to, as long as he can use me in any way. And I think he can use me in, in a lot of ways, not some... Some, part of them, maybe the most important is prayer. And I hope that as long as my mind is sound, that I'll be a prayer, a prayer, one that prays for people. I don't, I start to say prayer warrior. I don't consider myself a prayer warrior. I know some prayer warriors who I believe are, fit the category of prayer. I don't think I'm one of them, but I, I like to pray for people. And, and I will pray for you or anyone that, that I find out about that needs prayer or who asked me. Well, um, they, uh, 
Another thing we learn from this passage is don't, don't jump to uh, conclusions without, without giving serious and, and considerable thought and prayer to your situation. When it turns out that you're surprised uh, in, in a negative fashion, uh, pray about it. Seek, uh, seek counsel of family and friends, godly people. Uh, because God may use them to change your mind. He used Naaman's servants to change his mind. So be be willing to change your mind. Be willing. Be teachable. Continue to learn from anyone who God may use anyone. He may use somebody that's a lot less intelligent than you to help you and to teach you to show you. Be open to that. Be open to that. And then when when, uh, when, when, and if God chooses to heal you, and he, he may not heal your particular disease, uh, be it a skin disease, be it, uh, you know, uh, melanoma, or anything, uh, he can, he may choose, but, but we don't understand. We don't know why his plans work the way they do. Uh, why he doesn't intervene sometimes, but we we can be grateful when he does, and we can rejoice even when he doesn't. We, it doesn't really talk about about how Naaman reacted here, but we should. He should have reacted with praise to God, the God of of Elijah, Jehovah God, and uh, we can do that. We don't want him. We don't want to fail to do that. Let's pray, Father. Thank you for these time together when we can review these scriptures, even though we're maybe well familiar with the, the incident uh, recorded in these scriptures we've read today. But we, you can refresh us, re, remind us, renew us. You can teach us new things that we hadn't realized before or we've forgotten. And I pray that you have done that and will do that through this Bible study. I pray that you will be honored, you will be recognized, as sovereignly in control, not only of all health issues, but of the world issues, of the of the global warming uh, situation, the weather. Uh, if, if that, if that, um, uh, I don't know uh, all that's involved there. Uh, I never will understand that. That's not my field of expertise. I don't know that I have a field. My field is maybe the cornfield or the hay field. But I pray, though, Lord, that you'll help us to try to help one, one another to depend on you and to trust you for the days ahead. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.